Check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. D. Brief. Hello and welcome to The Debrief. I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. I'm Becky Scarcello. And I know you love the art. I do. You do. So mm-hmm. we've got one of your favorites, an artist yeah. that uh, you've been championing for quite a while. Uh-huh. And you are not alone. People have probably seen his art. Uh, first and foremost, the way I was introduced was through, of course, Atwater Beer. Yes, the Atwater right on the label. uses it right on the label. And that actually really stuck out to me the first time that I went to the brewery was the labels. I, I really took notice of that. But it wasn't until you told me later that, uh, oh, this is a, a, a local artist who does this, uh, who's been involved in a bunch of other stuff. He's been uh, named Best Fine Artist by uh, Detroit's Hour magazine years and years and years in a row. Uh, he is also a resident artist for Ford, working on stuff for the train station over there. Let's welcome to the podcast, Tony Rocco. Oh, me? Yes. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? The <laughs> living legend, <laughs> Tony Rocco. <clears throat> I don't know what it is about these headphones. You always feel like you're funnier, but you're, I'm, I'm really never funnier with these headphones. <laughs> I, I, I hope I am. I'm in I hope trouble I am if too. I'm too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're magic. Them on and start, start thinking I'm going to be funny. Well, let's talk about all the things that you do. Let's start with with Atwater Beer and the sure. brewery. How did that relationship come about? How did you, how did you wind up as an artist with your uh, with your art on a beer label? You know, I, I kind of always hoped that um, or wished that. Um, my work could be on a beer label. And it was just, just this silly idea um, that I never really thought would come to fruition. Um, one day we were sitting in the Ye old Saloon in Royal Oak, and uh, we'd been going up there for a while and and kind of got to know the manager, but never she never really asked what I did or, or anything of that sort. And um, she ended up seeing me on, like, Fox 2 or something on a, on a news segment, and uh, she said, hey, you know, you, you never told me you were an artist. And I was kind of like, well, you never asked. And, and, <laughs> and she's like, you know, we're, it's, it's the old saloon is turning um, 40 and we'd like to do a commemorative beer. Would you, would you be interested in doing the label? And so I kind of looked over at my girlfriend, Brooklyn, because we were just talking about beer labels. And I was like, is this real right now? Yeah. And um, it was really meant to be just a one-off. Um, and they made... They produced 60 cases and we went out and we promoted it. You know, it was, we were super excited about it. And well, then those 60 cases sold out, um, like in 24 hours. So a lot of friends and collectors kind of started calling Atwater and was like, Hey, you know, where's this (laughs) Mark's going to hate me for this, but where's this Tony Rocco beer? (laughs) You know, (laughs) (laughs) poor guys like worked his entire life on this you know, this brand and, and, and now they're calling it a Tony Rocco beer. It's like (laughs) (laughs) poor guy. But anyways, um, so he had gotten enough calls, um, to actually inquire. He's like, what, what, what is going on? And they're like, oh, is this one-off label we did with, you know, in collaboration with the old saloon. And so, um, they just kind of called for a meeting and asked me if I would be interested in, you know, uh, creating images for the rest of the labels. So (laughs) it was really, I mean, you had to pinch yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 cool the way that it un- unfolded, and most it, it seems that most most things kind of unfold pretty organically, you know. And, and and you get this idea that you know these things will come if you pursue if you just had the right strategy, and and then the next thing you know, you're in a a beer in a shop pub, and you get approached about a label. So I think it's just a testament to. Uh, and know, how many have you done for them now? I'm, <laughs> I I kind of lost track to be truthful, and I'm not just being funny about that. But um, I I think there's upwards of 25 to 30 or something. So oh wow, I didn't um, realize that many. Yeah, hmm. I kind of it's, it's been a lot of beers. And this is this <laughs> is a serious question. Like, do you think about it differently when you're painting something that you know is going to be that size versus something that you know is going to be, you know, 12 feet tall or a mural on a wall or something? Yeah, I mean, you can't help but think about it, and it, and it kind of gets in and sort of it can really contaminate your thoughts and in and, and knowing that something's gonna be on a beer label. Um I think commissions in general just have this really strange psychological effect, you know, because you start to think about what the client 
is is looking for. Um, we did we've a commission for. <laughs> we've had this conversation with Becky. As a matter of fact, she's um, she's you a collector. Ha- you have I'm, I am she the commissioned proud a, she owner commissioned a piece yeah. of a Tony Rocco painting. It's in my living room, and I love it. And I like look at it every day. You're not, just, you're not sick of it yet? No, uh, no. So. <laughs> but we did talk about this and he was asking me a lot of questions and I just said, I want I want it to be your work. You know, I want you to pick. And um, and I was super pleased with the way that piece turned out. And and I mean, that's, that's not always the case, you know? I mean, you just kind of, you kind of have these like internal battles and whatnot. But um, I don't know. Maybe it was just something about Becky. I was like, I, <laughs> she, I didn't get that stage fright as, as much. So. so let's talk about some of the other people that you've worked for over the years, uh, starting with Ford. I mean, you've yeah. done a lot of work with them. Uh, yeah, there's. They got to be sick of me by now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've gotta, so. I've got to. I got to move on. I'm just gonna keep moving. <laughs> I mean, you yeah, are, how long? It's been a long number of years. I right? mean, it's yeah. I'm in my thirtieth year. Um, wow. They uh, took note of my abilities when I was like twenty. Um, I had hired in on the assembly line and and was just sketching on my breaks and really just minding my own business. But um, th- I guess the word got around that there was, you know, an artist on line one. And um, at that time, they were trying to promote this employee initiative. Um, it was called uh, Employee <coughs> Involvement. And so they had kind of been looking for somebody to do some plant beautification for a while and never really found somebody that, that fit. Um, so they came down and approached me and kind of was pretty pretty surreal you know to uh go from working on the assembly line to what would you like to paint on these walls you know, <laughs> that, that, that are like was, 30 feet tall at that point was a career in art something that you were looking at i mean i think that i get asked that a lot and i think i always fantasized about it but it, it didn't really seem like a reality. So I had the moments and, you know, dreaming big and what if I could be an artist? But they they were kind of short-lived, you know, because it's like, uh, wake up, here comes mm-hmm. another car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, so, but, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if I answered your question. And, yeah. <laughs> and your parents are from Montenegro, yes. right? But didn't you say your dad always believed in the tan- Yeah, yeah. Tan- my tan- um you know, there's this there. There's this story I, I really don't tell very often, but um, and I don't I don't know exactly how appropriate it would, it would be for the debrief, but um, <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, we'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. We'll be like, the judge. Oh, we here, can here always edit. <laughs> and I think that maybe it's the story you referred to, okay. or you're referring to. I'm not, I'm not so sure. I, I don't tell a lot of people, so perhaps I did tell you. But um, you know, my dad was. Um, oh, it, I don't really know how far back to go, but we were we we're immigrants. In and um, my brother, just two years older than me, was, was born in a refugee camp. And um, <clears throat> Rome opened the doors to uh, Catholic Albanians at that time, and that's how they ended up in Rome. Um, so, what was I talking about again? Uh, how your dad believed? <laughs> oh yeah, in yeah, you. yeah. So yeah. this story, this this story, I never tell. Um, so my dad was. Um, when I hired in to work on the assembly line, my dad was in Albania uh, building Catholic churches for the Christians there. He would he would come, raise money, go back, and, and brick by brick, he was he was building uh, this church at the time. And uh, I came home. Uh, well, I was waiting for him to come home from Albania because I was going to tell him that you know I had to quit Ford Motor Company. I couldn't. I just couldn't work on the line anymore. It's it's very brutal job for a creative, you know? Yeah. Um, so I had tried to, <laughs> I had tried to deliver this news to him before and, and, and he wasn't going to let me quit because with our background, getting a job at Ford was the equivalent to maybe the average family having their first PhD in the family or something, you know, I mean this American solid, dream. yeah, the American dream, solid job insurance, you know, um, benefit, full benefits, that sort of thing. So, as I said, I tried to quit a couple times, and, and this time I was certain that no matter what he said, you know, I was going to quit. And, and mind you, you know, I'm 19 years old at this time. I still got to listen to my dad, you know, because we got that we got that cultural thing going, right? And so 
I try and tell him, look, Dad, you know, and I'm bracing myself. I'm like, listen, I, I, I've got to quit. I can't just can't do it anymore, you know. And he's like, you're not quitting. And I'm like, well, I was prepared for that. And so we go back and forth, and yes and no, and yes and no. And he kind of says, well, you can't quit, and I'll tell you why. And I'm like, well, what, what are you gonna, what are you gonna say, you know? And and he says so, and you know, I'm, I'm a faithful person. I mean, I mean, not the most religious um, person, but. Um, he says that uh, he was sleeping on the floor in the church and, and God came and told him that uh, I would be an artist for Ford Motor Company and then go on to be a, I hate the word famous, it's kind of silly to me, but go on to be a famous artist. Renowned. Yeah, and so... God said famous. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah, not that's you right. saying yeah, that. Yeah, God, so let's just I point mean, that out. Let's just quote God correctly. You, you can't second guess I the language. I can't believe I'm actually telling this story. I, this, I'm this, so this, glad this you're telling it again. Definitely not one. I was planning it. Um, so if I can just be fair, you know, I thought that that was, could perhaps had been the silliest thing I'd ever heard because mm-hmm. I had been working there for a year and a half and I knew there was no artist there. And if you did, you were a designer and you went to school and you can, it just wasn't the way it worked, you know? And, um, so I tried No, dad, it's not how it works. There's no, what are you, are you kidding me though? There's no artist at Ford and <laughs> this kind of thing. And, and so, uh, I left that day defeated and, and went to work and, and it was probably like a week and a half later when I was approached. Wow. I know. <laughs> to, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And yeah. so you can't make that up. He's still alive if you want to verify it. Um, you know, poor <laughs> uh, guy's getting up there in age, so, so, so do it quick. <laughs> but, <Okay>. Wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, and we we talk about that to this day. It's kind of just a... And then fast forward, you're their resident artist for 30 years. Yeah. And... Huge deal with this new Lincoln Continental. Right. Tell us about that. Well, um, you know, it's 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 kind of um been special for me to be commissioned by them outside of my employment position. So I mean I've always painted murals for Ford, but there was a part of me that didn't necessarily feel horribly accomplished because I mean, I was an employee, you know. So, in other words, <laughs> Ford was doing was this the, as something to the, to give back to the employees and to boost morale. Within right, the company. right. But um, you know, when we started getting, you know, like when we got the official commission for the 80th anniversary, it was it was pretty validating for me because that was as a fine artist and not as an employee. So right, right. It was special. And tell us what the owners of each of these cars are getting. In the, so yeah. they built. Um, 80 limited edition suicide door continentals and each of the collectors would get a signed uh, silk screen. I painted the 1940 continental. 39. Just <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we, we should point out that uh, yeah. <laughs> sitting at your side is Greg Hoffman, the executive director of the, doing my math for your me, art yeah. foundation. Yes. <laughs> Amongst other things. Fact yeah. checking you as we yes. go. Yes. <laughs> I, haven't right got, I haven't got kicked in the shins yet, so it's, um, I think we're doing okay. That's where you're sitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, pretty so, sweet. So, <laughs> so the silk screen, yes. yeah. Yeah, so the 80 collectors get a um, signed silk screen, and they're numbered on the license plate, which was kind of kind of cool. Um, and also the top uh, 20 Ford executives would get a copy. And it was cool. You know, we got to put um, a brochure in each, in each gift box with, you know, a bio and some of the some of the history, if you will. Yeah. That's the, awesome. The, I know. It kind of made the piece relevant, you know. And then the original piece is hanging in, the painting is hanging in the headquarters? Yeah, right? it's yeah. it's it's allocated to go in uh, Lincoln headquarters, but mm-hmm. it's r- right in our studio now. But, okay. Yeah. Right. Nice. Uh, let's also talk about the train station and what's going on there. <clears throat> because, of course, the big news has been that Ford bought the train station. Right. It's going to uh, move in. It's yep. moving in. Uh, it'll be a couple years a couple more before. Year. Yeah, a lot of work to do there. But you're doing some stuff there, right? Yeah, we've had a lot of dialogue with them, and, and we're creating um, some pieces for for the station. And and um, they've got some spots picked out, but we're, we're a ways out. Um, I've got time on that. But 
I mean, just the excitement of the project. Um, and if you know a little bit about my personality, so I've already begun them, <laughs> but I'm, um, this will be one deadline we won't have to worry about. <laughs> well, what, do you, what, what do you mean? So I mean explain your, your process. I mean, when you know that a project like this is coming down the pike, what do you mean that you're working on it now? Or? I mean, I just think that, you know, capturing the moment of inspiration is, is pretty important. You know, a lot of times people will be like, why do you start so many pieces without finishing one? And... I think it's like a songwriter that gets a melody in his head or a hook line. You know, you've got to get it down um, when the inspiration hits. So I think, uh, you know, the the exciting news about, you know, the opportunity to create um, a piece for such an, I mean, iconic, you know, um, historical building and, and the legacy and, and, and now, f- you know, coming full circle to Ford Motor Company, I just... I just had to start painting. <laughs> it was like, are there places or circumstances in which those moments of inspiration hit you? I mean, do you? I mean, you know, you'll hear people say, "Oh, it's when I'm driving," or "Oh, it's when I'm doing this or that." What is it for you? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, Picasso said, "Inspiration needs to find you working," and I, and I love that because I, I think that's sort of a testament to people that think. You can't create until you're inspired. Um, you might never get anything done because you might be inspired during a commute, right? You know, so you, so you're not really gonna be able to stop what you're doing and create. Um, so I've I've used that as a tool, and and I think if you just start, you get in front of the canvas and you start laying down paint, and it really does happen. But aside from that, I would say it's you know. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., it's the, it's the kind of stuff that keeps you up at night, um, you know, Sunday mornings early, um, that sort of thing. Uh, I find myself watching a lot of documentaries on, on the greats, and I, I can hardly get through 20 minutes of it. I've got to shut it off and go paint because it's just, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's so inspiring. So. And you're starting with paint. You're not sketching or anything first? I go right in with the, with the paint. Um, I used to sketch and and lay stuff out uh and i found that um for me you know uh, i don't want to knock it because you know so many of my favorites had always done that but for me i lose something i lose something very raw and 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 i can i can just pour so much more energy if i go right in with with paint you know so um i find myself a little less inhibited if I haven't done an outline in pencil, you know, um, I've often heard that like drawing is 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 great as it is and, and and vital and necessary and fundamental. It's the enemy of painting. You know, you're white knuckling a pencil, and it's all in your hand and wrist, and and painting is more of like from the elbow down, right? So, um, in in many ways, you kind of gotta let go of some of that stuff that got you there so that you can go to the next step, um, if that makes any sense. I feel like just having been to your studio and seen your work, that the color is so important. And so you laying on actual paint color seems to me to, is a way to let your mood out or your vibe. Does that, would you You know, I mean, so my favorites have always been the expressionists um, and, you know, color and the broad strokes. It's just, it really evokes emotion. So that's why it works so much for me um, is, is because it, it is very much the color that, um, you know, when you, when, when you get that person in front of a painting and they, they can't really put their finger on why they're, you know, um, feeling so much, normally it's, it's, it's the color in broad strokes, you know. So let's name some names here. <coughs> Who are some of your influences? Oh, uh, me and mm-hmm. me and Becky love having this conversation. Yes, this is good. <laughs> um, you know, I think first and foremost, as cliche as it sounds, I mean, how can you uh, deny Picasso? You know, I mean, he's often referred to him as the, you know, uh, you know the the David Bowie of the art world, or, or vice mm-hmm. versa. You know, there's two guys that had just kind of 
had done it all, you know, and it doesn't matter what you like, Picasso did it, and he was probably at the forefront of it. So, um, you know, as, as cliche as it sounds, I mean, you kind of got to tip your hat to him. Um, but beyond that, you know, it's it's Toulouse-Lautrec, uh, Van Gogh, another another very cliche um, name that comes up a lot, but you, you just can't deny these guys, um, especially when you're talking about emotional content in a piece. Um, Egon, Sheila... Uh, Klimt, these guys, Cezanne, you know. Um, so I think that, you know, I, I think my style is just made up of little pieces and components of these guys that um, were kind of mashed together beyond recognition that, you know, people often say, oh, your style's so original. And and I look at it and I go, oh, you ripped that off from him. <laughs> him. And, but, oh, but they don't know This is the Postman's like color palette again, right? Well, you know? <laughs> you're, you're sort of a combination of everybody that you've, you know, either encountered in some way or another. And, yeah. You know, you take a little of something with you. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, I, we'll get it. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but like we've developed a curriculum that is based in this, right? Because I just really feel that whether you're, whether it's your personality, you know, it's a combination of the people in your life that you've been influenced by. You know, I use the example, you know, you've got your uncle's sense of humor, but you've got your mom's passion for the arts. And, and we're all just like pieces of what we know, right, in our experiences. Um, so, I mean, any band that you love that you think is so, has such an original sound, if you talk to them, you know, the drummer's trying to mimic his favorites and the bass player's mimicking mm-hmm. his favorites and it comes together and it sounds very unique. But, you know, when you, again, when you break it down, it it begins to make sense like right. how this sound came about. Yeah, and all the things in your life that you see and experience, you can't deny that it becomes a part of you. Like you looking Absolutely. through all the 1920s <clears throat> photos and, um, you know, even the piece you made for me, off the Man Ray photo, it doesn't look yeah. like it, but yeah. you can see how the shape and the forms, you and, know. And so often it's, un- I think... I think something that's beautiful about it is, is often it's unbeknownst to you. It's never contrived, you know. It's 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 this thing that you kind of notice in retrospect more. You know, I'd live with a painting for six months, and I'm like, oh, and then, you know, a, a Van Gogh piece will come through the feed, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's where you got yeah. that, you know what yeah. I mean? Or that's where you got this little piece of that. And I think that's okay. You know, I mean, again, everybody's everybody's doing it. Now, let's point out, Becky is not the only celebrity who has commissioned your work. <laughs> I'm the lesser known. She's the most prominent. Among celebrity. the others uh, are yes. Jay Leno and Lady Gaga. Yes. Right. Uh, talk about what you did for each of them. Yeah. Are you allowed to? Do so, you have a non-disclosure? Yeah, no, no, no. I, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I mean, these things come in the most organic ways. You you think if you could finally meet that one person, he could finally introduce you to the other. And mm-hmm. and it just doesn't happen that way. Um the the Jay Leno, I, I had gotten Artist of the Year um, in our magazine, and Jay Leno's executive producer was from Detroit and saw it. Um, they were looking to get Jay something because he was retiring, and they contacted me, um, the executive producer did, and he was like, you know, I, just, I love your work, and I showed it to Jay, and he, he thought it was cool, and he's like, you know, would you would you, would you you paint a picture of Jay for his retirement? And I was like... Jay doesn't want a picture of Jay. I'm like, Jay wants a picture of Steve McQueen, man. And and so the producer was like, oh my gosh, you're brilliant. Yes, yes, Steve McQueen. And so anyways, um, we, we created this piece and, and, um, it was on its way to, to Jay Leno and the executive producers like, you know, it's like, Jay Leno's going to call you tomorrow in the morning, you know, and thank you for the piece. He loves it and this and that. And I was like, Jay Leno's going to call me tomorrow. Like (laughs) unbelievable, you know? So at this time, I was still doing frames out of my garage, you know, and I go in and I tell my carpenter, I'm like, Jay Leno's going to call me tomorrow. And, you know, I'm calling everybody. I'm like, Jay Leno's calling me tomorrow. You know what I mean? And, and for some reason, I woke up that morning and I was like, Jay Leno's not calling me, man. <laughs> like, what? It was like, I just had this, like, Dream. sobering moment, like, get the heck out of here, you know? And so that quickly, I really just dismissed it and kind of forgot about it. And... With my carpenter in the morning, and 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 uh, this was before Greg. Um, is that Jay Leno? Yeah, okay. This is Jay. Hang on. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, yes. Just a moment. Um, 
So I'm talking to my carpenter, and I, I look down, and the call says, uh, you know, California. And I'm like, I'm like, Jay Leno's calling me. <laughs> and so I, I'll never forget, I kind of walked out of the garage, and, like, I was so nervous. I just, like, started – I just walked down my <laughs> my street talking to Jay Leno. It was kind of pretty bizarre. Yeah, he was bet. He was a sweetheart of a guy, and, and um, I got to, like – Hit him with a bad joke, and it was, it was, it was perfect. It was That's perfect. That's good. That's good. That's payback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right, right. Um, and and tell us about Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, yeah. So the Gaga thing it, again. You know, um, I sold a piece. I sold three pieces. I just, I don't remember which they were, but I do remember one was a Jimi Hendrix, and um, it was to an anonymous buyer, and it was through a broker. And, you know, in this business, you'd like to know who has your piece. So I'm like, yes. Ooh, who is this, you know, who is And he's like, ah, oh, you know, it's just going to remain anonymous. And I thought, oh, okay. And um, I didn't think much more about it after that. But about a month later, I, I uh, get an inquiry through the website. And it's this guy, and he's like, hey, you know, I picked up these three pieces. And um, he says, I'm putting them in my studio. I have concrete walls. Do you have any suggestions of how I can hang them? And he was in Southfield, you know, so I was like, hey, man, I'll, I'll come and hang him for you, you know. And I walked into his house and I saw these gold and platinum records all over his walls. And it was like Justin Timberlake and Mary J. Blige and 98 Degrees and like all these, you know. And I was just like, who the hell are you, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm just a, I'm just a bass player. I'm just a bass player. Well, it turned out he was... Um, the uh, bass player and ba- and band manager for Lady Gaga, and so you know it gets cool and it's like cool studio in the basement and hang these pieces and and he's like you know he's like Lady Gaga loves your work and it was the same thing he's like we're giving her a gift for the end of this tour leg he's like last year we got her a watch and she never wore it and he's like she just loves your work she's tough to shop for yeah she's already got a meat suit suit. she's got a Kermit the Frog (laughs) suit yeah yeah. (laughs) so um, you know he was like I I was showing her the pieces I had picked up from you and she really seemed to you know love, love the art and he's like so we painted a piece and gave it to her and she was, you know, seemed pleased with it. And wow. so, yeah. And what does that one look like? Can you say? It's a piece of her oh, in okay. this case. Oh, Because okay. I was like, well, Lady Gaga probably she does would, want a piece right. of yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, Jay, you know, I didn't. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, awesome. Dudes don't want a painting of themselves. No. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, women more so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you started to touch on your arts foundation. And when you explained to me how this works, I just think it's fascinating. Where you give the inspiration. Mm-hmm to kids, but then they combine it so they can be successful on their own. So can yeah. you walk us through so that? It was, I think it was the realization that in retrospect, I realized my style was just these components of, you know, artists that I had been inspired by. And so um, I've been working with kids for about a decade and I wanted to formalize so that I could make a wider impact. And, you know, Greg is the co-founder of the Art Foundation, Greg Hoffman here. And um, I was coming up with this curriculum with the idea that, like, how can we produce originality? You know, like, what what would be an exercise in teaching kids to find their own voice, you know? And um, so we decided that we would um, – we work with uh, – the most underserved community, you know, of, of youth um, in Wayne County. So we decided that we would send them a, um, a survey. And in this survey, we would, you know, include masterworks, children's book illustrations, fashion, um, you know, illustrations, um, and, 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 just, and just have them rate them from one to five on color, subject matter, and style. And what that did is is it it gave us a bunch of info on what inspires them and what it, what it is about these pieces that really connect with them. So let's say they gave um, Van Gogh a five on subject matter, 
in Picasso and color and style, we would have them, we would create a formula for them based on those inspirations. So it would be Van Gogh's Postman plus Picasso's Guernica equals you, you know? Mm -hmm. So you would have to use the subject matter and then incorporate the color and style of the other master. And it's, it's kind of cool because these, these, pieces are proven, you know what I mean? The the color theory behind them. You know, they're picking up all these really important theories about art and they and it's it's kind of caught not taught. So um yeah, it's that's that's the idea behind it. Because it can be so intimidating to just have a blank canvas in front of you and tell a kid, you know, paint whatever you want. So it's it's so empowering. And when We'll have to put a link to this. Some of your, some of the projects. Yeah. When they, you see A plus B equals. I'm not sure what I've done because you know their works are becoming more popular than mine, and, <laughs> so, and you can get a much better buy on theirs. So. Let's yeah. let, let's bring <laughs> up the sure. conversation. You know, Greg Hoffman, who's been sitting here patiently. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Poor guys, like that is the worst explanation. No, no, <laughs> yeah. you nailed that. I, I just wanted it's, ever heard. To it's a good it. time to to, uh, to plug the fact that we we did a class uh, with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, a week ago today, actually, at the Foundation Hotel, um, which if you haven't been there, it's a great place to see a lot of Tony's work. Yes. But also for the next week, you can see the artwork that was produced by eighth and ninth oh. graders from the uh, Southwest Detroit chapter of the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, we got to get down so, there this week. Okay. Yeah, we had a, it was like an incredible. You, like uh, you need another excuse to I get know, to the like, Foundation <laughs> Hotel. Not there all the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we have to, you know, obviously take the opportunity to thank Foundation Hotel for that too, because they hosted the event there in the lobby. Um, we had ten kids from Boys and Girls Club uh, painting right there in in the hotel. Uh, they provided dinner for them and everything, and, and the their artwork is on display there. For the next, uh, for the rest of the month, um, okay. and it's just there in the uh, in the main lobby uh, by the Apparatus Room restaurant. So these kids, it was. Pro- I mean, I say this about every class after we have one. Uh, that was definitely my favorite <laughs> that we've done. Yeah, right. Uh, every the one of them one. is it's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just, it was so much fun because these kids, uh, they they really embraced the the format and kind of again synthesizing a new unique piece that's so personal to them, you know, from these, these other inspirations and just unbelievable artwork. I mean, we had, um, these kids hadn't painted before, you know, and they, uh, how old are we talking? <clears throat> eighth and ninth graders. Okay. This group. So, uh, 13 to 15 was the, the age range that we were working with there. And, uh, just so much fun. They, uh, and the, again, the, the artwork is absolutely incredible. I mean, I, I was looking at them and going, maybe we don't display these <laughs> next I'm, to my work. <laughs> I'm going to take them home with me and hang them on my oh, wall. But talk about oh, yeah. <laughs> empowering to see your work on that kind of stage. And yeah. Just, yeah. And these are, yeah. and these are works they feel good about. Um, yeah. I clash with some, you know, um, art instructors because there's this idea that, you know, you tell kids that there are no mistakes and everything is beautiful. And I mean, we want them to feel good about their works. We want them to feel successful. And, you know, so often, you know, little Joey paints a mud pie and we put it on the fridge and we all dote mm-hmm. over his mud pie. And Joey's like, it's a mud pie, man. What do you... <laughs> Oh, about, yeah. You know? I remember my oldest son caught me at that very early. He was probably three or four. He's like, don't even try He's it, like, Mom. you have to say that. You're my mom. Right, right. And, and, and it's, it's just, I find it interesting, you know, in no other art medium do we do this. You know, we don't mm-hmm. hand a kid a guitar and go, no, just put your it fingers anywhere. Good. It doesn't matter. It all sounds good. We go, no, these are chord patterns. Put your fingers here, right. and then become Jimi Hendrix. You know, but so I don't. I don't understand. You know why we you know, it's don't give easy them to look away. But if they screw up a recipe and you have to eat it, right? That's <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna say something. Yeah. <laughs> right, I got you. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's where that concept was born. Anyways, very cool. Yeah, I do have to give a shout out to Foundation Hotel because that's I think I knew your work, um, but when my husband and I were there for a famous Emily Gale uh, mm. extraordinaire <laughs> yeah. meeting, we both just were like, "This is what we want," and we have very different styles of art that we like, and your stuff is was like the perfect 
match up Great. before. Now we owe him a commission on your piece. Too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that was all you after that. But then I remember Jim like Graham, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll catch you. This we week. need we need to get to Tony's. So I didn't want one that was in the foundation hotel. I wanted my own. She, our own she's but. just saying all this because she she's trying to make her painting appreciate. This what's happening. Yeah, right. So <laughs> no, but they are they are such a supportive place, and oh then gosh, and then doing this guys. workshop. Yeah, but so. let's let's talk about some of the places where people can out in public see your work yes uh because there are a couple of places foundation hotel is one of them i mean yeah in terms of public spaces i think i think just a lot of restaurants Mm -hmm. um that's kind of in in the new nick speed video that's out there's a few paintings that make an appearance you restaurants but i mean tell us which one so that we can be we're super excited about um Working with uh, a new restaurant in in Gross Point Park called Bricks, uh, it's a it's a it's a pizzeria from like you know it's farm to table if you will, um, and their theme was sort of uh, gangster slash mafia because the, there's underground tunnels you mm-hmm. know from the prohibition days that that run under their restaurant and so um, I'm wrapping up some some. Gangsters. Oh, that's perfect uh, <laughs> for you. That's perfect for yeah. your style. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty fun piece. Um, so I'm excited to deliver that. Um, we're also uh, working with a new restaurant in Detroit, um, Amir's Place. I don't, I don't, I can't so, remember. Uh, currently, the Bolero, but it's going to be reopened as a place called Savant. Oh yeah, um, cool. And so they'll have a couple pieces there. Uh, the Red Dunn Kitchen at Trumbull Por- and Porter mm-hmm. Hotel. Is <laughs> Just another, ask Greg, you know. <laughs> another place that uh, they, they have four originals on display there that, that are part of the hotel's permanent collection. Yeah. Um, the Holocaust Museum mm-hmm. has a piece in their permanent collection um, in the lobby. Um, so cool. Very cool. Greg, let's talk a little bit about the frames. Sure. Uh, because that's, that's one of the things that you guys work together on. Yeah. Right? Uh, explain, you know, what the process is and, and how it works. Yeah, I, I mean, we uh, it kind of, I kind of fell backwards into it. Most most of my <laughs> relationship with Tony kind of feels that way of falling backward into it. So we have a running joke that I'm basically Forrest Gump on a lot of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, we we uh, we were kind of in a pinch on a, a commissioned piece, and we needed a frame. We we're kind of going through the rolodex of who can we get to to make this frame. You know, we need to deliver it to the collector in a couple of days, and we kind of went through all of our options. I said, you know what, let me take a crack at it. Um, and mostly we, we use a lot of repurposed post-industrial Detroit materials or, or post, uh, not all post-industrial, but I guess. Uh, architectural. Architectural, ar- architectural yeah. yeah, reclaimed materials. So um, primarily windows, we, yeah, we work yeah. with a lot of windows. Your piece is, mm-hmm. is a cobbled together from a couple old windows. Um we like to use when we can get them old baseboards because they make really cool frames mm-hmm. and uh, and yeah we we try to match the uh, the colors to to accentuate the piece because you don't need a flashy frame on a Rocco piece of artwork it's kind of background you know but uh, but yeah it, it really just adds another element to it that that kind of connects to Tony's artwork really. You see a lot of history in it, even when they're contemporary paintings or something he did, you know, yesterday. They they just kind of embody a lot of history, so they they draw back on, on a lot of these inspirations that, that he mentioned. They have uh, oftentimes people relate them to you know the 1920s and, and a lot of French influence in that. Um, so it adds a cool layer onto that of kind of these almost historical artifacts. Uh, so speaking of which, one of the best examples of that would be the frame that's on the. Uh, commissioner piece that's at the Foundation Hotel. It's right behind the um, the check-in desk, <clears throat> and that one uh, that that's sourced from some old barn wood of a, a barn that burned down, so it gave it some cool char and character to it. And then we also added artifacts that were kind of period period specific to the firefighting. Uh, industry but the firefighting calling i guess yeah. trade. um the trade right so we 
uh, you know, we found some old fire extinguishers that were made in Detroit in 1927. And there's a... Where do you find that? Uh, <laughs> antique you stores. You drive eBay. everyone you know absolutely crazy yes. until they nobody wants to talk to you anymore. <laughs> That's... Yeah. How I find mine, anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. I mean, we ended up getting probably ten times more uh, stuff needed. than we yeah. needed, but it was you know it was kind of cool excavating the, these old artifacts. The piece that went to Art Prize in yes. Grand Rapids, yeah. the big mm-hmm. art competition. So yep. yeah. Let's talk about Plymouth Mill and what's happening on June 18th. Sure. Uh, explain what this project is all about. Sure. So uh, we've been at this for close to a year at this point. So it's uh, in, in, in the bullet points, I guess, are this is, uh, it was formerly the, the Plymouth plant or the, the Wilcox plant. It was uh, one of the Ford Village industry mills. So in from the early 1920s into the late 1940s, Ford Motor Company had um, a fairly decentralized line of production, right? So Ford set up all of these uh, they, they are referred to as the village industry mills because some of them were converted flour mills. Some of them were new construction, and they were part subsidiaries. So they uh, almost all of them were powered by hydroelectric generators, and they were scattered throughout southeast Michigan on the Huron River, the Raisin River, and then the Rouge had, had several of them. So um, the mill that, that we're trying to get was a – engine tap factory from about 1923 to 1947. And so that was the implement that they would use to thread a bolt uh, bolt hole in an engine block. Um, and they also made uh, engine parts for the B-24 Liberator there during World War II. So uh, this little unassuming building that has been basically used as a a storage facility and a a compost and dumping yard uh, for about 70 years since Ford divested in in those and um, in the late 40s and into the 50s, Ford Ford Motor Company kind of shuttered a lot of these facilities in favor of condensing and moving uh, production into the massive factories. Um, But this small, unassuming building right in the northeast corner of Plymouth happens to have been designed by Albert Kahn, right, one of the most not only famous architects in Detroit, but in, in America, right, at, at the time. Uh, he also designed the, the Fisher Building, the Guardian, um, half of University of Michigan, and mm-hmm. all of the most iconic buildings that you see in Detroit, um, in addition to the those major factories that Ford built. Never did a beer label, though. <laughs> Never did a beer label. <laughs> no, he wanted to, right. but it didn't come to him. Yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah, so um, so the the project is a, is a public park public-private partnership with Wayne County and um, the Wayne County Parks Department. And the idea is that uh, we would like to purchase this building. Uh, We're having a big public forum, a town hall-style meeting on June 18th at the Penn Theater in downtown Plymouth. Open to all. Open to all. Free event. Please come. Um, And you get to see Tony's studio. Yes. To begin with. Yes. Um, and, And so the idea is to adaptively reuse that building. So we're kind of taking a page out of Ford Motor Company's current plan, like what they're doing with the train station. They're taking this historic building that needs a lot of love and adapting it to contemporary and future usage. Or the Foundation Hotel. For <laughs> or the Foundation That's Hotel. That's true. And our, our goals for the building are to really create a, a, a creative arts campus there. It would also be a, a new studio space for Tony. We are calling it a campus because there is uh, roughly three and a half acres of surrounding property uh, that would be in the parcel sale uh, that has been used basically as a compost yard and a, mm-hmm. and a road yard since about 1949. We would be that remediating. That probably composted by now. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all prime. done cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you need people to do on June 18th? Yeah. We need people to uh, to show up and hear mm-hmm. about the rest of this plan. Um, the cool thing that we're going to be doing with that exterior space is converting this this blighted post-industrial lot into what we're calling the inner child sculpture garden. So picture, uh, again, beautiful gardens, not quite to the scale of maybe the Meyer Gardens on the west side of the state, but you know, a smaller version of that where people can come 
walk through uh, on on walking paths and uh, that would be amazing. The, I love the Meyer Gardens. Oh, on me the too. West I love anything I mean, like uh, this. Yeah. I'm and, ready uh, to go. Yeah. And, and the sculptures will actually be the way, the concept for that is we would go into first and second grade classrooms in Detroit and make it kind of a design competition tied to the the, the historic themes of this this site. So I already mentioned, you know, Albert Kahn, Henry Ford, uh, Edward Hines is also a key figure in this, uh, as, as well as um, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. <laughs> so picture a, a second grader's crayon drawing of, you know, a B-24 Liberator bomber that we then work with Midwest Sculpture and they actualize that. They make it into mm -hmm. a larger than life sculpture that still looks like the kid's drawing where all the, you know, the angles are all janky and and, yeah. uh, and it's just going to be a lot of fun with that. So, so on the 18th, it's mostly our opportunity to gather community feedback about this. We, we have done everything we can to be very forthright and transparent about this process. Um, uh, Are there details online somewhere that people can go? Or can they follow you on social media, something yeah, like that? Yeah, um, our Facebook page. You can you can go to Art Foundation Roco. Um, you can search that on Facebook, and that'll take you to our. We'll our put page. a we'll put a link on our Great. show notes that goes to our list. Yeah, yeah, we we have information about the event on there. Um, All right, so June eighteenth, show up. Yes, and it's at where again? Six thirty p.m. at the Penn Theater on Penniman and Main Street in downtown Plymouth. All right. Uh, Tony, we have one last thing we want you to do before you leave. Are you ready? <laughs> he looks scared a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. <laughs> Starting with this, uh, you're a Detroiter. What was your favorite spot in Detroit as a kid? Eastern Market. Really? Would you go with your parents? What? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was, it's an immigrant thing, man. Like, you know. So it reminded them of uh, the old country. They loved it. We'd get lamb there and such. Nice. <laughs> so in Easter Market, you have all the murals, of course. Do you have a favorite outdoor mural? Um, not in Eastern Market as much. Or um, anywhere else, uh, really. The Russell. The Russell. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Lion. Yeah, yeah. Kobe, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my favorite Detroit mural. Uh, do you have a favorite monument in the city of Detroit? A favorite monument? You know, um, I mean, I, I've always been fascinated with the Joe Louis Fist just <laughs> because, you know, it's different. It, it was actually, uh, they actually used his actual fist for that. I mean, the, you know, for as a reference. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Nice. Uh, we haven't talked about music. Is music part of your artistic process at all? Absolutely, absolutely. That's a great um, question. Yeah. <laughs> so do you I have mean, a favorite Detroit musical artist? A favorite Detroit musical artist? I mean, you know, I'm a huge fan of, of, of Johnny B. Um, you know, he's uh, the drummer for the for the Rockets. Um, also uh, played with Mitch Ryder, and, mm -hmm. and we're good buds, and he just has stories for days, and I'm just fascinated with that guy. How about a place to go on a romantic date? <laughs> um, I, if I was a romantic, <laughs> um, I like flowers of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I just think that you know, it just has something special about it that um, you, you're pretty much going to impress anybody you bring there. Good call. Who is a Detroiter whose name everyone should know? I'm Charles McGee, an Af African American yeah. artist. Um, you know, I had mentioned my favorite mural, but maybe that was post uh, the Foundation Hotel bringing back the Charles McGee mural. Um, so, African American uh, artist, uh, you'd probably be familiar with his piece he did the sculpture out in front of the um, Charles H. Wright. Museum, yeah, Kresge, yep. eminent artist. Yeah, and just uh, this this mural that Tony's talking about was originally painted in the seventies, right? Yeah, 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 and then had faded, and they were actually able to restore it with original yeah. colors. And I thought so. it's just such a class act that they brought that back rather than. And if anybody knows him, I've been dying to meet this guy. So yeah, while he's still yeah, alive, he's yeah, in his nineties. So. Let's end with this. Where in Detroit would you go if it was the last day before you died? Yikes. I know. Um, where would I go after? You know, um, 
the atrium in Belle Isle has always been a favorite spot. Um, it's so peaceful. I don't, I don't, I, it's very hard to clear my thoughts, <laughs> but that's one place that, that does it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's there good. That I do, guys. Okay? Really yeah. well. Absolutely fantastic. We want a six pack of that water beer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think he gets that, anyways. <laughs> Dodie Rocco, thank you so much for Thanks stopping by. Guys. This has absolutely been fantastic. Yeah. And thank uh, you, Greg Hoffman. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, and you guys. One last plug us. June 18th. Where do we want people? June 18th, 6 30 p.m., the Penn Theater in downtown Plymouth. And All we'll right. put a link. We'll put a link on our Instagram. That's a we will. We'll Tuesday, be there. June 18th. <laughs> uh, until then, Detroit's moving. Keep up. The D Brief. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.